Hello and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at how to publish your images from Lightroom 3 to your iDevices, your iPad, iPhone, iPod Touch without having to use iPhoto. That's right, you can now do it directly from Lightroom and manage everything and update everything without having to do an export from Lightroom to iPhoto and then sync it that way. Now, of course, the reason we can do this is because in iTunes you can set your iDevice to sync to a folder. But the problem in the past is updating that folder and managing that folder has always been a pain, having to constantly remember what was there before and remove things and put new things in. But now we don't have to worry about it nearly as much with the published services inside of Lightroom 3. Back in Lightroom 2, I published a video on how to do it, exporting and having it automatically import to iPhoto. Now we can skip that step altogether. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, I've got my, uh, I got one of my catalogs open. It's my models catalog. And I have various collections. I have a beauty portfolio, I have a creative portfolio, and I have a or fashion portfolio. What I'd love to do is have all three of those albums or collections, I want those to appear as albums on my iDevices. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the beauty portfolio. And actually, it doesn't really matter in this case which one I start with because the first thing I'm going to do is create the, the, the setup for the published service. So you see that there's one here called Hard Drive. And Lightroom 3 has Facebook, Flickr, and SmugMug but we're gonna do the one directly to the hard drive. Now, to make this work, I'm just gonna click the button and I'm gonna go ahead and call this service iDevices. Now, the, the important thing is where you want your photos to reside because this folder that you're creating has to stay wherever you put it so that every time you sync your device, it can get to those images in that folder. So. Although you can do it to any folder you want on an external drive, internal drive, it should probably be on a drive that is going to always be there when you sync your device. So I'm going to put it in my pictures folder. Actually, no, I'm going to put it in a specific folder. I'm going to specify a folder in my pictures folder called iDevices. And I've already tried this once, so it's already there. But all I did was create a new folder in my pictures folder called iDevices and then I choose that folder. So I don't need a subfolder in this case because I want the main folder to be that iDevice folder. Now the next thing is whether or not you want your images renamed and I've experimented with this and you might want to do this um, to keep the images importing into your iDevices in a specific order. However, the interesting thing is going to happen is if you update or add pictures in between, that order still may not be what you want it to be. So you can, if you, if you know you're always going to append, you might want to uh, add in a uh, maybe a sequence number first, then the image number. Or if that's not going to be an issue, then you don't have to rename them. You can leave them in whatever uh, naming system that you have currently for your images. But just so you know how to do it, I'm going to go in and say edit my custom settings and here we'll take this out and let's say I did want them to come in in a specific order the order that I put them in in my collections then what I would do first is insert a sequence number and that sequence number in my case would be two digits because I'm never gonna have more than uh, I'm never gonna have over a hundred pictures in my port in one single portfolio so two digits is fine I'm gonna do a dash and then the original file name so it would be 01, 02, 03, so forth and so on, and the file name so that they would be in order that way. However, again, if you're going to be putting pictures in after the fact, in the middle of that sequence, the naming is going to get screwed up anyway. So I'm just going to leave the name, the original uh, file name that it was. I'm not going to do any renaming here. I, of course, they need to be in JPEG format for the iDevices. And I'm going to take my quality up to 80, and I'll leave it on sRGB. We're not dealing with video right now, so that's not a problem. Now, here's the other thing that you're going to want to look at is resizing the images. Because, again, you're exporting these images out you know, from your multi-megapixel cameras, and they're going to be quite large. Well, do they really need to be that large on your device? Probably not. 
So I thought about, well, what's the largest I would ever need to, to have it be on my device? Uh, and you think about, well, on your, your screen or your display on your device is not that big. So the only other time you would need it to be bigger is if you're actually displaying from your iDevice to, let's say, an HD TV. Well, HD 1080p is 1920 by 1080. So the largest I would ever need to display an image is 1920, in my case, by 1920, because it could be portrait or landscape. So don't enlarge it if it's not already that size. And 72 pixels per inch is fine, because it's just screen resolution anyway. All right. Uh, I don't need any sharpening in this case. I don't care about any extra metadata, and I don't want any watermarking. So now I hit save, and the published service is set up with zero images. And that's okay because this is going to be the primary folder. I want to now create subfolders in that iDevice uh, setup. So all I'll do is just go over here and right click on the one that I already set up. And I'm going to cr now create, and by the way, we could uh, select the images, but I'm just going to go ahead and create a new published folder. And that new published folder, since I'm in my beauty portfolio, is going to be called beauty portfolio. All right, so now I've got that, and I've created that uh, empty folder inside of my iDevices. And I'm just going to go ahead and drag over my 10 images into my beauty portfolio. So now I would just keep making my um, published folders for each one of my albums that I want on my iDevice. So we'll do another one. We'll say uh, create a published folder. This one is going to be my creative portfolio. Okay, and we'll go ahead and uh, create that. And the creative portfolio is going to be these 14 images. So we'll just drag those in. And again, it's not copying, it's not moving anything. It's just really making a reference or alias to those images. So let's go ahead and do one more, create published folder. And in this case, we're gonna create a published folder called uh, Fashion Portfolio. So these are the three albums I want on my iDevices. So now that I've got that one, we'll go ahead and grab my 13 fashion images and drag those over. So now let's take a look at what we've done so far. We've created our one published service called iDevices. We've added three subfolders to that main folder, and each one has images that are ready to be published. Now when you say publish, what does that mean? It means take these Photoshop files, these raw files, these DNG, these JPEGs, whatever format they're in, and make them the size that I specified in the public service with all the settings. So the quality, the sRGB, the whole nine yards. So now when I click publish, it will take these, in some cases, 100 megabyte files and quickly export out the JPEGs to the specific folders that I specified. So we'll go to creative, we'll publish those. And it's doing the same thing. It's taking each one of those images and I'm on a relatively fast machine, so it's making those JPEGs and putting them in the folder. Same thing, we'll now do fashion, publish that one out. And it's quickly going through and publishing all of those images to the folder. All right, so now at this point, if I were to go out to my operating system, in my case, the Finder, I now have an iDevices folder with three subfolders containing my JPEG images. So it's gone ahead and done exactly what I asked it to do with the published services. Now, so far at this point, you've done nothing special that you couldn't have done in Lightroom 2 or even Lightroom 1 as an export. An export would have accomplished the same thing, but now the difference is if you do any updating, all you have to do is republish and it will update the images, replace, take out the old ones, put the new ones in, and you're good to go. So for example, I'm in my fashion portfolio, and let's pick one here. Let's say that I want to, they're all finished images, so I'm gonna make something up here. Let's say that I want to, uh, we'll take this one into the develop module of Nicole here. And once we go into the develop module, we'll just make any adjustments. So let's go ahead and add a little bit of fill light to this image. 
even though I was happy with it the way it was. We'll bump up the exposure a little bit. And um, we're, yeah, <laughs> let's see, let's go ahead and uh, add a little vibrance and clarity. And we'll just go ahead and use one of the sharpening presets too. So we've made several adjustments to this image. Now when I go back to the uh, published service, you'll notice it says, hey, I noticed you modified this image. It needs to be republished. So when I, this is the beauty of it now, when I click publish again, it will replace that picture of Nicole with the new one with the adjustments in that folder. So if I go out to the Fashion Portfolio folder, there should be a newer one of Nicole at 1019 versus 1017 for the image, other ones. So that one is the newest one that just got republished. So it did exactly what it was supposed to do. It deleted the old one. Put the new one in with all the new adjustments ready to go. So now the next time I sync my devices, it will sync the new images. And I can, of course, add more images. So, for example, if I go in and let's see, I've got some older images here. Uh, let's say I want to add that one to my beauty portfolio. I'll just drag it into the published service. When I go there, it will say, hey, there's a new picture that needs to be published. When I publish it, it will append it on. And that one will now be in the folder with the beauty portfolio. So again, the next time I sync my device, it gets the new images. So we're doing this and controlling this all from your, your original images where you like to keep them in Lightroom, but we're making the changes in the folders. Okay, so now that you've got that all set up, how do you get that onto your iDevice? So let's go ahead and switch over to iTunes. And I, I have my iPhone plugged in, and I'm just going to go ahead, although I've got this normally set up on another computer, I'm just going to walk you through it. I'm going to say sync photos from, no, 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 not iPhoto. We're going to sync photos from a folder. We're going to choose the folder. And it's going to say, what folder do you want? And I think you've guessed it. We want the iDevices folder. And the iDevices folder will be all of the folders. And if we had videos, it would include those too. It's 38 images in those folders so far. If I were to click apply and sync, now it would, of course, in my case, replace the images I already had on there with these new 38 images. So I can have as many albums or collections as I want from Lightroom out to that same iDevices folder. Every subfolder I make will be an album on the device and I can keep updating it directly from Lightroom. And now that it's all set in iTunes, Every time I plug in my device and click sync, I'm going to get the latest photos. So that's how you can publish or sync photos from Lightroom without going through iPhoto directly to your iDevices, iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch with the published services in Lightroom 3. So I hope you learned something. My name's Terry White. Thanks for watching.